Now, secession is not a new idea by any means, even here in America. There are several states and several backers of secession for states like Texas. Earlier, I was joined by Daniel Miller of the Texas Nationalist Movement to discuss if secession stateside was on the horizon. I first asked him why he and his organization want to secede from the rest of the United States. Well, you know, to, to address the, that issue, I think we have to go back to what you just originally said, where uh, you stated that people would be surprised that it's happening here in the United States. But something to bear in mind is the issue of, of state independence and Texas independence in particular has been a regularly polled issue for at least the last 10 years. So, you know, the, the issue here is, is not just that, that Texas independence has crept up on anyone. Uh, our list of, of grievances with the federal system is quite long. Uh, we've been quite vocal in public about it through our organization. Uh, but beyond that, just like Scotland is now taking this opportunity to, to have its voice and to talk about how Scotland could be better off as an independent nation, that's what we've been talking about here in Texas, too, for well over the last decade. And now your movement itself actually petitioned and got enough signatures that it warranted an official response out of Governor Rick Perry's office. Now, Governor Perry went on the record to oppose a Texas split. Now, why do you think that is? Well, I think Governor Perry has always sent mixed signals, but that is really part and parcel of uh, the people in the Texas legislature and the state government uh, it really as a whole and their, their record on it. And I think, you know, while we're, we're talking about this in the context of, of the, the Scottish referendum, I think it's important for those politicians to note that the, the politicians in Scotland that did not support a referendum on independence were swept out of office when the SNP took power in a landslide. So as this continues to be an issue, as Texans continue to state over and over repeatedly that they want a vote on independence, the politicians that ignore that and ignore the will of the people do so at their own peril. And now if you suppose you got your way, if Texas were able to secede, give us an idea of how it would operate as an independent sovereign nation. How would it how would it keep its coffers filled? How would you run the school system? Tell us about that. Well, right now, Texas runs its own school system. Uh, so education is, is not going to be a factor where there's any additional expense. But, you know, so many of the objections from the opposition echo what is happening in Scotland with the Better Together campaign, this fear mongering. But people need to remember that Texas is a donor state. Uh, we put over $300 billion a year into the federal coffers in Washington, D.C., and do not even receive that much either in direct grants, services, or economic impact back from the federal government. So, you know, we're looking at right now Texas already is the 12th largest economy in the world. But when Texans are able to establish their own tax policies, their own revenue generation policies, and then spend according to our priorities, what we're going to find is two things. First, that our priorities are very much different than what uh, what the priorities in Washington DC are and number two Texas is not only going to be economically prosperous but very well could be an economic superpower in the Western Hemisphere can you tell us about the the first point like what's what's important to your to your organization there well you know one of the one of the big issues here in Texas right now and, and I know that you guys have reported on it is obviously the border and immigration over the last eight years uh, issues related to the border and immigration have consistently polled as the number one concern for Texans yet the federal government continues to do absolutely nothing substantial about addressing the border crisis or the immigration issues so that's just one but you know we've got so many different priorities here uh, when when you have uh, when you have these issues, whether it be here in Texas with, with water or the border or immigration, it's very difficult to swallow when hardworking men and women here in Texas send their tax dollars to Washington, D.C. to be frittered away. So it looks like your organization is very obviously supporting the, the Scottish push to secede as well, um, right there on the, the homepage of your website. Why are you guys supporting their secession? Well, the, the issue with Scotland goes back for quite some time, as has been our communication with the people in the Yes campaign. 
But you have to look at, at what's going on in Scotland, what's happening here in Texas, what's happening in Catalonia as part of a global trend. Uh, it, it is important for everyone to remember that at the end of World War II, there were 54 recognized countries around the world. At the end of the 20th century, there were 192. And since the, uh, the tick over into the 21st century, we're seeing that number continue to grow. Self-determination is a global trend. So, you know, we're not sure how the vote is going to go in Scotland. We, of course, hope that, uh, that Scotland does recognize its own potential and decide to, to take hold of its own destiny and vote yes. But at the end of the day, what is important for us is that the Scots were able to go to the polls and have the option to, to call their own future to vote for or against independence. Now, as you mentioned, at the end of the 20th century, that there are actually nearly nearly 200 sovereign nations now across the globe. Um, I think a lot of people, though, could argue that those nations that have broken away, on the flip side of this, people are going to say a lot of those new sovereign nations are not doing too well. How do you support that if, if um, even though the trend is that everyone wants to be sovereign, but they're in a worse off position than they were at the beginning of the 20th century? How would you defend that? Well, I mean, I think you would have to define what, what exactly is worse off. I mean, I, I think when you have a jump of, uh, of 140 nations added to the globe, uh, you're going to have some folks that are winners and losers in this situation. But at the end of the day, the right of self-determination is inherent. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to take away someone's right just because it, it's, you know, they, they have a, a run of bad fortune or they don't use it properly. I mean, we don't apply that to, say, freedom of speech or freedom of religion. So the, the fact of the matter is, is that with uh, so many countries added to it, you're going to have some that do well and some that don't do so well. But the fact of the matter is, is that since all of those votes for independence took place, not a single one has made a decision to go backward. All right, we're going to leave that right there. Daniel Miller, thank you so much. Daniel Miller, president of the Texas Nationalist Movement. Thank you very much.